We have Robert Monroe. Great to see you, Chrysalis Thank Capital. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Um, I'll give you a quick little uh, introduction of Chrysalis. We create what are called capital pool companies, uh, perhaps otherwise known as shells. Uh, those shells are listed on the TSX. The main purpose of a shell is, of course, to take a budding business that used to be private, public. Uh, we help along with the process. Uh, the company, at the end of the day, emerges as a public entity. We end up with some stock in their business, and they go on their way as a public business. So we facilitate that. I'm going to give you a quick stat, which is very interesting. There's about 180 of these uh, capital pool companies today listed on the TSX. There's over $100 million in cash in these CPCs today, and at least 200 shareholders in each of them. So that means there's at least 36,000 investors out there who invested in CPCs. It's not a small market, and I bet a whole bunch of the viewers are investors today. It's quite a pool of capital. Been then. Um, let me have a quick comment and then a quick question. Absolutely. I'm, thank you. You're the first company I've ever sat uh, being a panelist that's actually said how much money they want and how much of the company they're prepared to give up. So to refresh, I think it's 200000 Yes, and you're absolutely. prepared to give up 15% of the company. 15, so thank yes. you. We don't have to ask you that question. Um, the question I have is uh, I get online contests. Uh, I, I, I'll have to talk more about with you. I don't, I don't quite understand what makes a patent pending, but we'll talk about that later. How do you get the product? How do you get the retailer to say yes I want you to use my contract. Absolutely. You know it's always a chicken and the egg scenario. We have a situation whereby we're forced required we're forced we're first required to build a user base that can become appealing to a vendor who's looking to expand their brand, you know, generate a little bit of buzz. One of the things that we do and I think where some of our origin came from is in the sense that we looked at the group buying model. It's fabulous. So I understand uh, the marketplace quite well, mm -hmm. uh, and I love your website, by the way. I think oh, it's super simple, and there's not enough simplicity in this world. People seem to like to make things <laughs> complex, so I, I, I applaud you on that. Um, and I actually really like your, I'm going to call it a widget. It's a bad word to use, but yeah. I'm going to call it a widget because I really like it again. Um, you've joined Extreme Ventures. Extreme Startups. Yeah. Extreme Startups, I apologize. Um, two, hopefully not two uh, lengthy <laughs> questions, but the first one is why Extreme? And the second one is, what are you doing this for? So it's a personal question. Why are you doing this? And we should remind people that Xtreme is essentially a merchant bank or a, really a venture incubator. That's right. Yeah, so it's a 12-week program that you go through. You get mentors and advice. And at the end of the program, you essentially raise your Series A of financing. Um, I chose Extreme. I'm from Toronto. I love being in Toronto. Um, know a lot about the Toronto community of entrepreneurs and like the guys at Extreme and thought we could get a lot out of it. Myself, I've known I wanted to start a company since I was like nine years old. I went to business school and on the first day realized that that didn't mean starting businesses and spent all my time planning events for startups. So um, I've, I'm doing what I love. This is really right. the opportunity I've been waiting for. Robert. So I'd say again, thank you for putting out the valuation because most people don't do that. Um, I'll follow it up with at this stage of your business, it's a lot less about the number you put in valuation. So when you're raising this round of financing, I think what you need to do is try and find someone who loves your idea. And quite frankly, uh, the value becomes less important. So would I put money in at this stage? Um, likely no. I, I don't feel you're quite far enough along to be defendable. So in other words, I think someone else could do this relatively simply. But again, at the same time, you want to find that person who loves your business, could be an advisor, potentially an investor who would also help you out. And it's not going to matter what the valuation is. And I think the ask is reasonable as long as you can continue to show some traction. Robert. Yeah, I actually really like your solution. I, again, I want to talk about how I like the fact that it's simple. I think there's not enough simplicity in this world. Um, I like your website. I like your approach. I feel uh, a path you could choose to go down is to simplify your market size a bit. And so what I think might be very interesting is go after the mompreneur, you know, the, the woman who sits at home and who's got something that she's created but has no way to figure out how to sell it. Um, in fact, uh, that's a huge marketplace. But if you could sort of take your, 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 um, your business and focus it on certain elements that like, yeah. like that, you might have some certain you know, better paths to success in a sense. Um, thank you. We are out of time on the pitch. Thank you so much for watching. If you have an idea, we've heard some really good ones today, uh, get your emails into the pitch at bnn.ca. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back at the same time, same channel next week.